You may be seated. Friends in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. So let us confess our sins to God, our Father, and ask him to forgive us. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept in a silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as in the heat of the summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my sin to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Hear then the good news. God does not leave us in our sins. For while we were still sinners, God sent his son to die for us, so that we might have forgiveness of sins, life and salvation. Thanks be to God. It is upon your confession that I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. On behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ, I joyfully and confidently forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. We join in prayer as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. And friends, you know that our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it to them and said, drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you. Come with joy and confidence. God is the giver and the body and blood of Christ is the most precious gift.
Ourselves completely, all I own and all I do, I give to you. Richly we have received, dear friends, may the body of Christ and his holy precious blood strengthen and keep you in body and soul to life eternal. Go in his peace, serving him with joy and gladness. Amen. Gracious and loving Lord Jesus, thank you so much for refreshing us with this healing gift. May it strengthen our faith in you and our love for all others. Grant it for Jesus' sake, in whose dear name we pray. Amen. And we're going to sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
Please be seated as God comes to us now in his life-giving word. Uh, Firstly, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, we are a new creation in Jesus. We'll also remain seated for the gospel today, a well-known story that Jesus told us, and we'll unpack that in the message today. Thank you, Bev. Thank you. From the book of 2 Corinthians, uh, starting at chapter 5, verses 16 to 21, in Christ the new has come. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To those holy gospel as written in Luke 15, 1 to 3 and 11 to 32, the parable of the lost son. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am, starving to death? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat 
so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Christ. Thank you, Bev and Mori. And let us pray for strength in our weakness. Almighty and merciful God, you love us and make all things new in Christ. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your kindness and make known your heavenly glory in the renewal of our lives. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And led by Luther's words of the Catechism, let's confess the faith in Jesus who died and rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord. He is truly God. He has always been the Son of the Father. He is also a real human being, the Virgin Mary's Son. Jesus rescued me when I was lost and sentenced to death. He set me free from all my sins, from death and from the power of the devil. It cost him more than gold or silver. It cost him his life. Even though he was holy and innocent, he suffered and died for me. Jesus did this so that I can belong to him and he can rule over me as my king. I can live under him and serve him, innocent and happy forever, just as he was raised to life and lives and rules forever. This is certainly true. Amen. We rise to sing. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to him, threw his arms around him and kissed him. Please be seated. Jesus is the master master storyteller. We probably all know people around us who are really good at telling a story. And we're drawn uh, drawn to these people because we just love to hear a good story, don't we? 
But Jesus' stories really set him apart because he told stories about common earthly experiences that we can all identify with, and he used those stories to teach us some important truths. His desire is that we see ourselves as we really are, as we stand before him, and that we see him as he really is, how he interacts with his creation and especially how he deals with us who are the crown of his creation. The stories that Jesus told really captivated his listeners. And they did that because they invited them into the story, sometimes in a very obvious way, a pointed way, but sometimes in a hidden way. Our story today about the waiting father or the lost son challenges us to see who we might be in this story. Are we the waiting father or mother? Or are we the rebellious and wasteful young son? Or the ungrateful older son? So that's your challenge today as you listen. Do you see yourself as the waiting father or mother? Maybe you know what it's like to have a strong-willed son or daughter, somewhat rebellious, someone who does not easily take no for an answer, someone who knows better, and so they left you and left the home just so that they could be independent and do their own thing. So then as father and mother, you understand and know what it's like to have your heart broken. You're consumed by grief and your desire is only to have the family unit restored by the return of that lost son or daughter. You do what you can do. You hope and you pray. You wait and you just long for that return. You long for the lost one to return so that your family can be restored to its unity. And you would do anything, absolutely anything, to arrange a welcome home and party. So, what about us here at Holy Trinity? What about us? Are we heartbroken when just one of our fellowship severs the tie and leaves the church? Are we distraught when someone leaves our community? Do we even notice? Do we then also, like the waiting father and mother, watch and wait, hope and pray? Do we long for their return so that our fellowship can once more be restored and complete? Do we seek them out? Do we listen to their story? Do we share with them how much we miss them? Do we perhaps invite them back if that's the appropriate thing to do? Do we long for a welcome back party? Or do you perhaps see yourself as that young son or daughter who was lost and dead? Yes, you were young and curious. The grass always looks so much greener on the other side of the fence, doesn't it? There was so much out there for you to explore and to get into and experience. The world is enticing and attractive. Life in the fast lane sounds so good, doesn't it? Especially when you're young. So, well, you wanted to have all your share and you wanted to have it right away. Why wait to claim what is going to be yours, your inheritance, for the appropriate time when you can have it there and then? You wanted to do your own thing, be on your own. No one looking over your shoulder anymore. No boundaries to hem you in and restrict you. And haven't we had enough of restrictions? So good to be a free spirit, isn't it? So really good to be a free spirit. Good to be let loose 
and to be really able to live. But everything has its season, doesn't it? You've learned that too. The sun might be shining today, but that certainly doesn't guarantee that it's going to be shining tomorrow, does it? The money runs out and you're lost. It's what reckless living does. And you find that the fun you were having is no longer satisfying like you thought it would be. Especially when your friends leave you because you've got nothing more to share with them and give to them. And then, just like the young son, or maybe it's a daughter, you crave the food, the comforts of home and your own bed. Did you also come to your senses like the lost son? You appreciated how good you had it at home. You always had the father's presence and the joy of being in the family and belonging. You were protected, protected especially from yourself and your own foolishness. So you went home. And with time, those relationships were restored and healed. Praise God. But maybe you didn't go home. Maybe those relationships have had no healing. Many families are still divided and broken. Does it have to be that way? Don't let you be the one who chooses it to be that way. There's still time. That's the gift of God's grace. Time. Time to choose better and time to do better in the future. Or maybe you're sometimes like that older son. Perhaps you have been ungrateful, an ungrateful son or daughter. You've been doing the right thing, obedient and working hard. You sometimes feel your efforts don't even go noticed. You think they're not acknowledged and you're not being appropriately rewarded. But all the while, you have your father's presence and security, the comforts of home and family. You always have food and clothing more than enough. But it never seems enough sometimes, does it? Perhaps you even take it all for granted, just like you were feeling you were being taken for granted especially when you see others living it up and your father throwing a party for the wasteful young brother. Your jealousy burns within you. Your father comes, not to rebuke, but to plead with you, to plead with you to come back home and join the party. And there has to be a party because what was lost has been found. That which was dead is now alive. I imagine that most of us at some time have been like any one of those characters in the story. The heartbroken and waiting father or mother, the young son or daughter lost in reckless living, or the older son who was always having so much and giving so, get, being given so much but had failed to learn that lesson of contentment and gratitude. I ache for those of you who may still be that waiting father or mother or may have been in the past. I have been there too. Not as a father, I never will, but as a pastor. I grieve for those who have walked away from the church and maybe away from God. I grieve even more because sometimes it seems to me that no one notices. And even worse, maybe that I had a hand in it. I understand those of you who perhaps have been that younger son lost in reckless living 
Well, that's been me too. I've been disobedient and rebellious. I too have let others down and broken their hearts. Well, I don't mean to, I guess it's going to keep on happening with me this side of the grave. For you and I are human and we are all in need of a saviour. Most of all, I praise God that this story points us through the Father to the Heavenly Father that you and I have. The Father who is so heartbroken and so lovesick over just one who was lost. He will not stop looking and waiting and hoping and longing until he sees the lost return. His heart will never be healed until that happens. His arms are always outstretched to embrace and welcome back you and me when we are lost. I call on those of you who may be or have been that older and ungrateful son or daughter. I too know what it's like to take things for granted. I've been there. But when I come to my senses, I am overwhelmed by how incredibly blessed I am in my life. We don't have to step into the shoes of those who have lost everything in the eastern states of our land through the floods, or even less, the devastation and the wretchedness of those in Ukraine who are suffering in the hands of the madness of their brothers next door. May our thoughts and prayers be with them, that God may bring healing and hope to them, that God will truly be with them. We have a God and Father who loves us and who cares for us everywhere, all the time, in all situations. He loves us so much that he gives us his own dear son. He loves us and he promises that he will always be with us. And he is. He loves us. And yes, he longs and he waits for us to return to him when we wander. He loves us so much that his promise is for us to be with him forever. So friends, let the Father's love shine in you and let it shine through you for the hope and healing of others today, tomorrow, and forever. God's word is true. Amen. And now may the peace of God keep your hearts and your minds safe in Jesus, God's Son, who has rescued you and me to share in the Father's presence. Amen. We sing our next song. And if you haven't given your offerings as you come in, you are welcome to do that as you go out. with
Thank you, Michael, and let's pray in thankfulness. Loving Father, you have sought us out and made us yours. Help us to offer our lives in thanksgiving, doing what you want us to do. Amen. Any announcements? Now's the time. Uh, I will sneak in to make one. Wednesday night, our midweek Lenten devotions continue, and this Wednesday night, we're going to be looking at Pontius Pilate. And now we're going to listen to Linda and then to Peter. Just a, just a quick um, unique is this uh, Friday night and we are doing something a little bit different. We're going out for tea. So if you don't feel like cooking, um, come and join us. And if you don't want to go by yourself, find a friend um, find a, or a daughter daughter-in-law, bring them along and um, let's have uh, a meal together. Um, it's at the west side of Horsham. It's just brand new. It's all been refurbished, so it'll be fun to have a look at and enjoy our company. And also, um, this Monday night is shed night, so for the guys that haven't been for a while, um, rock up and enjoy the evening. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Gus. I just noticed how good the slides were today with the um, <laughs> pictures on the, on the sermon. I thought that was really good. Uh, four weeks ago, we had a call meeting, and last Sunday, uh, Pastor Paul and his wife, Karen, came to Horsham, and we um, spent time with um, PAs and church council on Sunday, late Sunday afternoon, and they toured the college, and we had a look at the rest home and a few places in Horsham. And um, we had communication during the week and yesterday I spoke with Pastor Paul and he advised that he believed God was leading him to stay in Canberra, which means he has declined the call and we start again. So thank you to everyone who was involved in last Sunday and Monday and thank you for your prayers and... Um, yeah, continue prayers, but I now request, please, that you continue to pray for the call committee and the process as we start again and we listen to what we are being told and, um, yeah, that's how it is, isn't it, Gus? That's how it is, yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. Sad, so but you just don't know sometimes. No. But anyway, we pray for guidance and ongoing guidance. Thank you. You've been there before, haven't you? You've had to pray a long time before to get someone. Yeah, and so it goes on. Prayer readers, please come and lead us. We are in desperate need of God praying for us. And there is, there is one prayer there for Pastor Paul um, and Karen, and we know the decision now. Um, so we, we, we pray for them as they continue in Canberra. Friends, you know that Jesus welcomed sinners and he ate with them. As he welcomes us into his presence, let us pray that he would bring the whole world to repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the community of believers you have given us. We are all sinners who can be saved only by you. Please help us welcome all who come seeking forgiveness and faith and rejoice in their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you for the pastors you have given us. It is so easy to expect them to be perfect and they always disappoint us because they are human. Put a vibrant faith in you in their hearts and your words in their mouths that we do not see them only from a human point of view, but listen to them as your ambassadors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you that Pastor Paul Hanola and his wife Karen are considering the call to serve us here so earnestly. Please move them to do your will and serve where you can 
can best use them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you, God, that you have kept us faithful to you. We ask you to show yourself in some way to those who have wandered from the faith and lost their way. Our hearts bleed for them. Please challenge them so that they return to God their Father. Make us able to witness them effectively. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the families whose lives are governed by you and your word. However, we know that there are even Christian families that are div divided by dispute. Please guide them to treat each other with Christ's love, that they may be reconciled. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you have loved us so much that you suffered and died a horrible death that you never should have had to, to, ex to experience just for us. Help us to never take your love for us and your sacrifice for us for granted. Keep us faithful until the day comes when we enter into the promised land of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, Lord, as we come to you for help through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and rules with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we go from here, may God bless us to be a blessing to the world around us. Let's rise. Go in peace as fellow members of God's family. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace provide you with every good thing you need in order to do his will. And may he, through Jesus, do in us what pleases him. Amen.